and we're here to debunk the myth that all carbs are bad. So let's start off with the most basic, simple question. What is a carbohydrate? Basically, a carbohydrate uh, is something that could be found in almost any food that we eat, as you can see over here, with the exception of fat, like oils, and animal protein. Otherwise, any other food is going to contain some degree of carbohydrate. Carbohydrates can be divided into three different subcategories. So we have the simple carbohydrates, which are otherwise known as sugars. We have complex carbohydrates, otherwise known as starches, and we have fiber. Basically, the sugar and the starch are broken down into glucose molecules, which is the main fuel for our body. Fiber basically is the main structural component of fruits, vegetables, grains, and legumes. It doesn't provide us with any calories, but it gives us uh, the bulk that we need for our uh, for our diet. The question that a lot of people ask themselves with all the information and misinformation going around is, do we actually need carbs in our diet? And if we do, why do we need carbs in our diet? Our central nervous system, our uh, brain, and our muscles run on glucose throughout the day. So if you're not consuming enough carbs, uh, basically you're not feeding your brain and your muscles with enough fuel. You'll end up feeling tired, sluggish, you won't be able to concentrate at work or at school and you won't have enough energy throughout the day to do a workout or just to do your normal daily habits. So a lot of people who are following low carb diets or very low carbohydrate diets are basically losing weight just because they're simply cutting out foods, which means they're cutting out their caloric intake and they're burning more than they're consuming. Okay, so you're saying there's the, the reason why people are getting results with these no carb diets or very low carb diets has nothing to do with the fact that they're cutting out carbs, it's just that they're reducing their caloric intake. That's right. They could be cutting out anything and still be getting those same type of That's results. Right. Uh, one thing that worries me um, about following diets like this is that people are cutting out whole food groups. Um, so carbohydrates, that's like I said, that's what our body is running on. And it's not sustainable over the long run to cut out whole groups of food um, for a long period of time. So what's going to happen um, after somebody follows this type of diet for a few weeks or a few months and then goes back to a different type of eating pattern? their weight's going to come back on. So we're talking about carbohydrates and choosing the right carbohydrates because we now understand there are some carbohydrates that we definitely need and shouldn't be eating in our diet mm -hmm. and some carbohydrates that we shouldn't be eating at all. Um, we hear about the glycemic index as a tool to help us decide that. Our clients often ask about this. Maybe you can explain a little bit about what it is, the glycemic index, mm -hmm. how to use it, and, and you know, what is its, its pertinence? Basically, it's a ranking system, and it ranks foods from 0 to 100 based on uh, how quickly the food will cause our blood sugars to climb. So in general, if we look at the foods that we have over here, um, foods that we would want to avoid that have a high glycemic index are typically ones that are made from uh, refined flour, and that would include things made with processed and refined grains, and uh, that would include white flour, like this white baguette we have over here, um, pasta made with white uh, semolina, uh, white rice, and uh, these crackers that are made basically with white flour. Those foods are going to cause that big rush of blood glucose and then the big crash afterwards, and we want to avoid that. Foods that are better to choose um, are whole grains. Here we have some quinoa, we have some uh, chickpeas, which are legumes, which tend to have a very low glycemic index and are very healthy, packed with nutrients. Um, we have a sweet potato. A lot of people have the misconception that a sweet potato, because it's sweet, um, would cause a rush of blood sugar, but actually it has a low glycemic index as an, and is a very healthy choice. What about the talk about the glycemic load? Okay, how does that factor in here? What is that all about? Glycemic load considers the quantity of food and basically looks at it in a quantity of about 100 grams. So, uh, for example, um, if you look at just the glycemic index uh, chart, you'd see that watermelon, for example, has a high glycemic index because it is very sweet. It has a lot of sugar in it, natural sugars. Um, but if you look at the glycemic load and you have a bowl of watermelon, uh, it actually doesn't cause your sugars to raise up that quickly because it is diluted in so much water. Uh, so that's also something that's very important to consider because um, some foods that have a high glycemic index uh, may have a lower load. So Jasmine, what are some simple changes that people can make to their diet uh, to incorporate some of these good carbs that we talked about today? Uh, and obviously, everyone's concern how they could also still you know, get their weight loss goals, get their fat loss goals uh, incorporated. And I'd like to explain to people that one slice of white bread versus one slice of whole wheat bread, if they weigh the same, they actually give you the same amount of calories, which is important to know. Um, but in terms of nutrition, it's completely different. It's like black and white or brown and white. 
So um, what the brown bread is doing is that it's giving you fiber. It's, uh, it's a whole grain if you're choosing 100% whole grain bread. Um, and basically, like I explained before, when you're eating it, when you're consuming it, you're not getting that big spike of blood glucose that we would get from having the white bread, uh, which is actually rated on the glycemic index uh, ranking as 100. It's very high. It's ranked right up there with pure sugar. So uh, that's something that we would want to avoid. So now that we know that not all carbs are bad for us, we can go out and make some better choices. Update your shopping cart.